we have an amazing multitude of choices to make when it comes to buying silver and gold and that could be a good thing or a bad thing in today's video we'll talk about the better choices we can make in regard to value when it comes to stacking precious metals so make sure you stay tuned YouTube what's shaking welcome to another episode of the silver and gold stack attack I'd just like to take a quick second to thank you for spending a few minutes with me today for this video uh, the support for the channel has been amazing which leads me into my next line you already know it best damn community on YouTube you guys are friggin awesome so today today we're gonna talk about the most practical silver and gold we can stack and why now bear in mind the stuff I'm gonna show you today is based on my opinion uh, what I think is practical and what's worked for me but you might have a completely different opinion and that's okay I absolutely do welcome feedback so let me know with a comment down below what you're doing or uh, what you see differently uh, we're gonna kick it off with silver so let's go ahead and roll this piece so we'll start things off with the most basic silver you can find out there and that's one ounce generic silver rounds now these are going to give you the best bang for your buck since they're the most affordable but you have to be aware that if you try to sell these before silver price increases to beyond what you paid for it in other words <laughs> some years down the road not right now uh, you're not going to get back what you have into them now these are great for adding weight but they're a big part of that long hold deal that comes with owning silver you got to be you got to be willing to hold it now one of the better benefits of these rounds is the unlimited amount of designs out there holy crap Finding something that appeals to you should not be a problem with these because there are literally thousands. Uh, just be careful because there are some generic designs out there that carry higher premiums and those are made by uh, mints like the Mason Mint, like this one here. A little bit of a premium on those. And you got Germanium Mint, of course. Definitely a premium on these, for sure. Uh, and Silver Shield. I mean, those are a few examples. Uh, some of those rounds can climb beyond, actually beyond government-backed bullion in price pretty easily. Next up, we've got one ounce silver bars. And just like their generic silver round counterparts, uh, these bars are an affordable way to stack weight. But there does seem to be a stigma attached to them since their buyback value tends to be low when you're ready to unload them. Uh, some years ago, there was a huge question about actual silver purity uh, with bars, and a couple of places were found to be using less than the purity of the silver they were claiming. Uh, so that was a big issue. Also, you have to remember, these are highly counterfeited. Uh, just about every mint is represented by Chinese fakes today, so you've got a verification issue on top of everything else. You're going to have to test everything, uh, and when you sell, the dealer's going to have to test everything. Um, so folks are generally pretty leery of one-ounce bars, and that does reflect in the buyback price sometimes. So again, the same concept that applied to rounds applies here. You'll have to hope that silver goes up in price beyond what you paid for these bars, or you're likely to lose money if you sell it too soon. Moving on, we're up to 10 ounce silver bars, and these are a personal favorite of mine since they're not too big, but they're big enough to get a lower price per ounce than you would with a one ounce bar, depending on which bar you're buying, of course. So we can break down these bars into three basic groups. The first is the generic group where they're made by private mints like uh, Atmex, uh, Sunshine, Asahi, you've got Horaeus, um, uh, Germania, Tau Preziosi, uh, the list goes on and on. And these are available in an unlimited amount of designs and they can be poured, cast, or pressed. Now the second group I like to call premium bars. Uh, these are going to carry a slightly higher price than standard generic bars and we can include the Royal, the Royal Mints uh, Britannia bar, uh, Royal Canadian Mint bar in that group and maybe the pricey uh, vintage bars that carry high premiums. Uh, these definitely come to mind, Englehard. And the third category is going to be collector bars like uh, this Three Graces bar for example, limited edition. Uh, they usually go pretty high in value if uh, Un in the Lion has any indication. But there was only 61, uh, I believe there were only 6,100 of these made, so it's a limited bar. Um, these, I mean, you can add Pamp and Geiger and this, this Garris Sofa bar, all that stuff would fall into the collector category. Now, these definitely aren't recommended for stacking due to the premiums, and they're highly likely to appeal to collectors more than stackers. Now, that being said, there are some seriously 
uh, loyal Engelhard stackers out there. And I'll give them kudos for going after the pricey stuff. But in this, if we go by this silver category, your best bet is going to be the lower price generic silver bars. Uh, but if you want to keep things fun, I'll maybe throw in some Britannias and RCM bars in there and maybe the occasional collector piece that appeals to you. You got to keep it fun. Now, Brits and RCMs, those bars should hold their value fairly well, but you have to be careful with collector bars like these uh, Argentia art bars. They're beautiful, no question. Very detailed. I love having them. Uh, I really do. But you've got to be careful. A lot of dealers are just going to consider these another 10 ounce silver bar uh, when it comes to you selling them, which pretty much shoots your premium out the window. Now, honorable mention to uh, Kilo Bars, since they uh, seem to be really popular with stackers as well. For me personally, I have a couple of Kilos, but I try to stick to the 10 ounce as my highest silver weighted bars. And another honorable mention goes to 5 ounce bars. I know there's plenty of you out there that collect them and stack them. Uh, I keep a few, but they're not my first choice in bars, and I'm not really sure why that is. <laughs> All right, the second to last category for silver is what I call tier one and tier two government back bullion. Uh, we'll start with tier one. And this category is where your uh, your Eagles, Libertads, Maples, Brits, Krugerrands, Phils, and Kangaroos are generally gonna fall. Uh, in addition to other bullion coins like Kookaburras, Pandas, et cetera, et cetera. There's no shortage of these out there, that's for sure. Now the benefit of this group is that their purity and weight is guaranteed by the respective government mints. And uh, as a result, they'll sell for more than generic rounds in most cases, uh, especially Eagles, Libertads, and Maples for the most part. Uh, the Brits, Krugs, Phils, and Roos, they might actually sell in the same range as generic sometimes, but if that's the case, I'd rather stack the government back stuff if it's that close in price. Uh, they're all pretty much going to milk spot for the most part anyway, uh, except for the Maples. Uh, Royal Canadian Mint's done a great job on those. Now, the next category I like to stack is Tier 2 Government Backed Bullion. And that's bullion made by private mints for governments. For example, uh, Scottsdale does all the Eastern Caribbean stuff. And London's uh, East India Company mints a lot of the St. Helena coins and whatnot. Uh, these are generally priced pretty nicely, except for the East India coins. Um, these do, <laughs> they do tend to carry a premium. They're nice. They're definitely nice, but you're going to pay a little bit extra for them. Uh, they're pricier than generics, but you can put together a great mix with both tiers, uh, adding quality silver and weight. And the last category for most practical silver to stack is 90% junk silver, or constitutional if you prefer. Now to me, these are the ultimate in fractional silver, but not everybody buys into their viability. Uh, what we do know is this, 90% silver coins are really popular right now. Uh, but their prices are extremely up and down over the last couple of years. I mean, at one point, we were well under $20 face, and before you could even blink, we'd gone up as high as 25 face or more uh, last year and then into this year some. Now, while I do believe in these silver coins, I would not buy them unless they averaged under $20 face, uh, preferably more in the $18 range, to be honest. Um, but your basic category, you've got Walker halves, Benji halves, you got your... Uh, Kennedy halves, Barber halves, uh, smaller increments, Washington quarters, standing Liberty quarters. These are tough to find. If you can see a date on these, you've done well. And of course, you've got Roosevelt dimes and Merck dimes uh, as well. Uh, and technically, these are 90%, but they are not junk silver. These fall more into the numismatic. You got your Morgans and uh, Again, these, these aren't, uh, they're not going to be cheap. Even Slick Morgans are selling for $25, $30. So 90% silver, but technically not what we're looking for, uh, for stacking. But uh, look, just bide your time and look for the best value on these um, because the prices actually do fluctuate quite a bit. But next, we're going to wrap this video up by covering gold. All right, we ran a little bit long on silver, so let's shotgun through this section on the best value gold to stack really quickly. Now, gold is pretty cut and dry as far as categories go, right? We can break it down into roughly three. And the first one is pre-33 gold. Uh, now, those are awesome. They're great to have, and I do recommend buying at least one if you can, uh, just due to the history on them. They're absolutely beautiful coins, but as far as stacking gold, well, they're not the best choice. 
Uh, the premiums on them tend to be higher than standard gold bullion coins, and you're getting less gold weight. Uh, these are more for the collector segment with numismatics, and uh, they do tend to hold their value really well, which kind of makes up for having less gold in them. Now, me personally, I don't like them raw. If I'm going to buy these, I want them certified and slabbed. That's So I'm going to pay extra for them, uh, unfortunately. But, but that's what one of my requirements are for the most part. But the next category um, is government-issued bullion, like eagles, Britannias, maples, yada, yada. Uh, they're all popular choices, and they're more affordable than the pre-33. Uh, the most expensive one in the bunch is by far the gold eagle. Uh, Britannias and maples can be had much cheaper, and they're a finer blend of gold than the eagles, which have, what, 91.67% gold purity. And they have a mix of 5.33% uh, copper and 3% silver. So they're not pure. Uh, Krugerrands have the same exact gold blend as the Eagles, so keep that in mind as well. Now, Britannias and Maples are going to have 4 ninths fine gold purity, which means they're made up of 24 karat gold. And for whatever reason, these are more affordable than the Eagles, so this is the area that I generally stack gold in. Um, it's going to be Britannias and Maples, for sure. All right. Uh... Now, I have to give honorable mention to the American Gold Buffalo, which is an amazing 4 ninths fine gold bullion coin. It does have a $50 denomination on it, so it can be included in the government bullion, uh, government bullion issues. Now, they sell for slightly more than Eagles in price, but you do have that 24K, that 24 karat purity in them, so you have to consider that. Uh, I know a lot of stackers who have chosen the Buffalo for this very reason. Uh, also, keep in mind that there are a good number of mints from other countries putting out quality gold coins. Uh, you need to do your research and figure out which is best for you. Now, the third category is vintage foreign gold coins, like French roosters, British sovereigns, etc. Uh, British sovereigns are somewhat affordable here in the U.S., but they tend to have a niche following. And some foreign gold is uh, very liquid and popular. And quite a few gold bugs really do love the French roosters, for example. And the British sovereigns seem to do well, but... Other countries' gold coins can pose a potential liquidity risk issue. Uh, they may not be as liquid as the other stuff. So for that reason, I avoid them, uh, even though I do want at least one rooster and one sovereign at some point. All right, there you have it. Uh, be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this list and what you would add to it. Uh, there's a damn good possibility that I missed something, so uh, be sure to sound off and let me know. I do go through all the comments, and I try to respond to each one. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Silver and Gold Stack Attack. And if you made it this far, well, kudos to you. I'll definitely catch up with you in the next episode. But in the meantime, you know what's up. Stay safe and be well, everyone. I am out of here. Peace, folks. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Oh.